y'all. Billy at Permapastures Farm, and it's a, it's a bittersweet day whenever you're doing what we're doing today, and that is processing birds. We got a bunch of these ginger broilers, and we got our friends right here. Here's one of them, Hi. Denise, and Ben, her husband's over there working on the other table, and you can find them over at Renewed Homestead. You want to check them out? Anybody looking to build a homestead from the bottom up, I mean bottom up you definitely want to check them out they're good friends of ours and they're over here helping out and guess who else is over here we got justin doing his this thing over here beautiful bird there you go look at them justin what's so special about these birds it's the yellow fat ain't it man i tell you they so much yellow fat i can't see the chicken on this thing <laughs> <laughs> and then ben's over here doing his thing uh ben yes you feel like you got this down to a science i, I think i'm getting it He's as good as me, and um, yeah, I don't know if that's, that's a I don't, compliment. I don't know if that's saying much, but honestly, when you slow down and when you got a bunch of hands doing this, you can take your time and make sure all this stuff is exactly what it ought to be. Now, we just put out that butchery video the other day regarding a pig. If you want to see one on chickens, check out Jason's from Sow the Land. Start to finish with every bit as much detail as what we provide in that um, pig butchery. Now, let's just kind of walk over here and look at the system we got. Nothing fancy. Everybody's doing their thing on the table. We got our buckets down below where it's catching all the uh, guts and everything else. We're leaving these birds whole where typically I use what's called the strong bond method on some of them where we can take 60 birds and get them in a, a freezer above a refrigerator. But we got another little thing going on over here and hopefully this will happen through YouTube. We talked about it on Patreon. Michelle, of course, is over here working with Denise. They're scalding. And then they get over here to the plucker and then you're gonna see my trees in the background where they just got cardboard on them. That's a whole, I'm remulching everything here in this thing over here, but check this out. You don't need, a, you don't necessarily need a giant um, apparatus in order to bleed them out. We got traffic cones sitting on the back of my Dodge here. And these are the ones that, have, that are bleeding out. It's nothing more than a traffic cone. We got a um, trash bag that goes down into a bucket that captures all the blood. Not one part of this operation, not one part of these animals is gonna go to waste. These are the ones he's already bled out. We could use probably six more cones if we wanted. And then this here is the ones that's already dead and it's you know ready for the, waiting for the scalder in the bucket. Now with this operation, y'all, the way we got it going right now, we could probably, taking our times and doing everything as we ought to, get probably 100 birds done in an hour. And that's really just kind of easing along. The last part of this whole thing, of course, all the plucker, the feathers and stuff, this is all going to be compost, and it's going to make the best compost ever. And then when these guys are done over there, things are a little bit of a mess right now. When they're done over there, I start them here. They do their pre-cool over here in this water. And then once they get sufficiently cool, they graduate to the bigger one here. And I'm going to let them set up for about 24 hours at least. Apple cider vinegar's in that water. Once they get done, we'll do another quality control check on them, and then we'll put them in the bags. I don't like to put them in the bags until they had time to really, really take their time and let that meat kind of equalize, so to speak. All right, y'all, it's the next day. Yeah, and right here and here, we got our barnyard pimp, AKA chicken. All right, we've changed out the water and it's still nice and cool. Well water, I mean, I'm not trying to get caught up in any litigious nonsense, but well water always works to set the best. Um, that's my experience. That's a little something I got from Mark over at Baker's Green Acres. Big fan of that dude. Doing awesome stuff for a long, long time. All right, so I'm gonna take them out of here. And let me tell you what I'm putting them in. You can use any variety of things, but in my case, see these little carriers? This is what they normally put vegetables and stuff in. Um, I got I picked these up at the Asian grocery store and I love them. Now, my man Jason at So The Land has a really good contraption you can make out of PVC and that's fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. 
but I'm gonna take them, stick them head up if they still had a head and I'm gonna stoke them up in here and I'm gonna let them air out and dry out. Now, they're in the sun at the present moment, but they will make that transition over here to the side of the house where we got some shade. And I'll tell you what, y'all, the thing that I love so much on these birds that you ain't gonna get from a store-bought bird, see all that yellow fat? This is how we do it. That's what I'm talking about. Now, you may see that little bobcat contraption over there. That's a, that's a rental. Um, that's how we do it. I mean, we don't have the money to go out there and buy one straight out. We can't even find one right now. So that's what we do. We need a tractor. We rent it for a little while. We need a uh, one of them little side-by-sides or whatever you call them things. We rent it for a little while. That's another project altogether. But this is the main start. Now, over there, we have our little cooker, our turkey cook fryer thing. And we're going to get that temperature up to about 185, between 185 and 190. And then we're gonna put these guys in a shrink wrap bag. Now we've done videos in the past where, oops, the crop got left on this one. All right, see this is where you're also doing your quality control on this thing as well. All right, here we go. Um, it's really simple for the most part. You got a little straw sticking up out of the top of this bag and then you stick it down the um, cavity of the chicken. And there's a bunch of different ways to go about this. The instructions say, put your tie wrap on first. That don't work out for me. In fact, these bags, half of them spring a leak. This, I'll never get this brand again. This one says stick it down there for about five seconds. And then you let it come out, let it sit for another 10 seconds. It's generally pretty tight around there. And then you pull this out and then put a tie wrap on it. And we'll stick it over in here. But I'm not at all happy with this brand. All right, here we go, y'all. 40 birds, ready to rock and roll. I'm not happy with these bags. Um, I guess maybe I better reach out to them before I tell everybody don't buy them because I'm not at all happy. Half of these guys sprung a leak, so that ain't cool. I've never had that happen before with another bag company, so I'll, I'll reach out to them. Maybe it's an oversight. Maybe they didn't know any better. Maybe it's just good old-fashioned planned obsolescence. You never know these days. Well, here we go. 40 bird, 41 birds, and then we've taken... 10 of them and stuck them down in the laying flock. In the future, we're just gonna hatch them out because frankly, in these times, I don't know that I can count on the system to get them here. With all the nonsense going on, I mean, it just makes better sense to just go ahead and hatch out my own. So we're gonna do that very thing as we've done many, many times in the past. All right, dollars and cents. So when we bought these birds, they were $3.90 a piece. So 50 birds, that comes out to 195 bucks. If you were to throw in, let's say, the rations we had to buy, whatever the case may be, so let's say you're up to 250 bucks, all right? Now, if you were 250 bucks on the equivalent, how much meat was it, son? 200 and how many pounds? 10. 210 pounds. That's what we got total. Would you consider yourself money ahead? <laughs> I think anybody would. Now, also, now the only way you're money ahead is if you fed them the way we did, okay? Food scraps good solid food scraps and they did just fine excellent birds now let's just factor in the other part i'd say we got somewhere in the neighborhood of about i'd say conservatively 17 cubic yards of compost if i were to go into town and get stuff the best stuff i can buy we're looking at at least 70 bucks a square yard and this stuff is light years better than that okay so let's just round it down let's say it was 10 cubic yards I got, uh, not square yards, but cubic yards. Let's say it was 10 cubic yards. It's 70 bucks, okay, that's 700 bucks. Minus the 250 I got under these birds that I had to spend out of my pocket, I'm money ahead, 450 bucks. Sound like a pretty good deal to you? Not only did I put 41 birds, 210 pounds, into the freezer, but at the same time, made 450 bucks on the process. Now, in fairness, I did not count my labor. Okay, so you'd have to, you'd be into it for something. Either way, your money ahead. But this is why we do what we do, y'all. To not only for us to put this, because frankly, we didn't need the meat. The reason we did this is because we needed the compost. The meat is really the byproduct of this whole system for us this time. Now, for you or anybody else, you, you may see a massive benefit in both. Now, granted, there is a benefit. We'll get around to eating this. <laughs> it's just we weren't hurting for it. We were hurting for the compost. So here we go, y'all. This is how you do it. This is how many times we've done it. I can't even count at this point. 
but we've proven that it can be done, that you can bring all this meat home, put it in your freezer. It's gonna require a little more elbow grease, no doubt about that, but you can do it for free, especially in these times. We better be looking for ways outside the box. Another way is not having to take it in to have it butchered. Most people can handle chickens with a little bit of training, no big deal. But if you wanna learn how we do pigs, how we raise our pigs, put them in the freezer for about 21 cents a pound. Well, part of it is we didn't have to take it into a butcher. Um, there was a guy at one of the le re recent festivals we went to told me that he paid $1,000 to get two pigs processed, which is highway robbery where I come from. Well, you don't have to do that. We got an online butchery course right now that we teamed up with Jason from Soda Land to make it happen. Check out it. Check it out down below. And I'm telling you what, y'all, that's how you save money. Knowing how to raise these guys with food scraps and knowing how to, you know, dispatch them, um, skin them, scald them, whatever the case may be, put them in the freezer, doing it yourself. That's the real key on how, on how you can save all this money. All right, y'all. If you haven't yet, check out the best podcast out there called the Permaculture Pimp Cast. It's also listed, listed down below. If you need anything from us, bone sauce, comfrey, whatever the case may be, um, butchery instruction, we now have that. Check us out at the website. All right, y'all. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. And this is the kind of permaculture I love, y'all. We'll see you next time.